Now, next up, Gemma Peacock is with us this evening. Gemma is 31, a mother of two in Sussex. Five years ago, she discovered she had a rare form of cancer in the form of a tumour. In other words, cancer of the digestive system. Gemma is with us now. Hello to you, Gemma. Hello there. Hi. Tell us about your cancer, Gemma. Okay, so it's called, it's called GIST, which stands for gastrointestinal stromal tumours. Um, it's a very rare type of cancer that is most commonly found in the digestive system. Um, my cancer was found when I was 26. Um, I was pregnant with my second daughter, um, and it was a large tumour found within my stomach, um, which was removed along with over half of my stomach just shortly after having my daughter Willow, five weeks prematurely. Um, it was a scary time, um, and obviously it was even more scary once we found out that it was actually a high-risk malignancy as well. Yeah. Um, so we had to go on to have regular checks at the hospital. And people will understand why I'm talking to you tonight when I tell them that the, the drug that you need to survive yeah. is about to be taken away from you, is about to be withdrawn from the NHS. That's right. The drug regorafenib um, is actually the last option for myself and many other people with the rare gist cancer. Um, the issue is, but if you're on regorafenib currently, you'll continue to receive the drug. Um, the issue that we've got is, it's, uh, you know, there's a, quite a, a few of us that aren't on regorafenib as yet, um, but are going to need it within the near future. Um, but unfortunately, it looks as though that drug has been taken away from us. But that's obviously why we're on here now. We're campaigning um, to get that decision overturned, to get regorafenib reinstated for people with rare gist cancer. So let me get this right. This this is a life-prolonging drug. Yes. It will be denied to new patients. Yes. So in other words, people who are already on treatment, they'll continue to get it for free. That's correct, yeah. So you'll continue to get it? No, I'm not on it as yet, so I won't get it. When, I, when it comes to the time when I'm going to be needing it, it I won't see. be available. So, yes. your, your, so your condition isn't bad enough just yet? So the horrible twist to this is, in order to stand a chance of staying alive, you need your condition to deteriorate. To deteriorate and deteriorate very quickly, yes. I've actually just had a scan done, um, and I'm awaiting the results, which I receive on the 25th of March. Um, and the scary thing is, if I get told, nope, you know, the, the cancer is still stable, I know, in my mind, that I'm no longer going to be able to get regorafenib because the drug that I'm on is still working. Um, I should be happy that the drug that I'm on is still working, but obviously the, the other side to that is, you know, I've got a drug being taken away from me at the same time. Yeah, so that drug you're on won't work forever. You'll need to go on to this other drug. Yeah. And they're not going to give it to you? No, that's correct, yeah. Um, and it's, it's quite, yeah, I, I can't accept that. We can't accept that collectively um, as a group of patients, which is why we're campaigning currently. To get, we've got an online petition um, that we've done, we've set up, it's been set up by a lady called Victoria, um, and yeah, we, we need to get as many signatures as possible on there. We need to get 100,000 signatures by the end of the month, um, which is a really tough call. We've not had long to do this at all, um, which is why we're doing this campaign. So we're just asking everybody to please sign our petition. Um, you can access it by gemmapeacock.org. Um, Gemma with a J, um, so if you were to put on GemmaPeacock.org, that would take you to my website. And there's a big button there which says sign the petition, and that is what we really need people to do. Can I, can I, can I just, uh, again, try to get my head around this? So if, yes. you're, if your condition deteriorates, yep. they will give you the drug? Yeah, I, the, the cut-off point is someone within March. Now, obviously, my appointment is the 25th of March. It may even be too late at that point. Um, and it may be that if my condition has deteriorated, regorafenib already won't be available to me. Um, this is why we're, we're just trying to get get it, you know, we, we need to get this decision overturned. We need this drug to be available to us. NHS England uh, withdrew the drug in January, and they said that this drug represented, quote, insufficient value for retention. Yeah, what they've done is they've actually grouped... Um, rare gist cancer incorrectly it should be grouped with within the rare cancers category um, in fact what they've done is they've had a look at regorafenib and they've had a look at it in its effectiveness against rare gist cancer it's very effective it's actually the most effective but they've also said 
that because it is not affected, because it can be used, apologies, because it can be used um, fairly ineffectively to treat common bowel cancer, it means that they are not going to fund it anymore. They can take that drug away um, to save money. Whereas if they just looked at the effectiveness against rare gist cancer, the drug would remain um, because it is very effective against rare gist cancer. Are you frightened, Gemma? Very. Yeah, I mean, it's terrifying. It really is terrifying. You're only 31. Yeah, I'm only 31. My daughters are four and six. Um, you know, the prospect of not seeing them grow up is terrifying and it's heartbreaking, to be honest. It's, yeah, it's tough. It's tough to hear. What is your prognosis if you don't get that drug quickly? We don't know. We're living our life three months at a time. Um, I have my checks every three months, um, at which point I'm told as to whether the cancer is still stable or whether it's spread. Um, I've got four tumours in my liver, one in my stomach, and it could be that one of them will continue to grow whilst the others stay stable. We just don't know. This cancer, you know, it's not been around for very long. The knowledge of this cancer is, you know, it's fairly new, um, and the statistics aren't out there to actually say, You've got six months, you've got a year, you've got, you know, ten years. We just don't know, which is even more scary than not knowing. But, and the fact that we're having a drug taken away that could potentially give me another five years with my family and could potentially allow time for a cure to be found is not acceptable. It, you it know, costs nearly £4,000 a month. It does, it does. And with all the will in the world, um, you know, my brother offering to sell his property, you know, everybody chipping in you couldn't expect them to do that and you couldn't you couldn't keep up that that amount of money you just couldn't do it it's, it's too much money you couldn't have, keep that up have you told your kids no no they know that mummy's got a poorly tummy um they know that i get tired very quickly um, and that i can't do the things that i used to do with them which is hard enough you know in itself but having lost my dad in 2013 and my children being very, very close to my dad, you know, he died fairly young of cancer himself. My children are going to associate mummy having cancer the same way that you associate granddad having cancer who died. So I can't let them know at the moment. It's a small world because there's someone listening now who's just sent me a text saying a dear friend, Stephen, is suffering from the same cancer hmm. as Gemma, is in the same position. Yeah. I've signed the petition to keep the drug. We do all this research into treatments, and then we don't use the drugs. I yeah, it's, it's, really, it's really tough. You get mixed emotions. You've got angry, you've got upset, you've got fear, um, all combined into one big, you know, one big cloud hanging over you. And we've got to try and, you know, move this forward. We've got to try and make the government realise that this drug needs to be reinstated. And to do that, we need 100,000 signatures for them to take us seriously. When have you got so far? We have got, we've just gone over the 23,000, which is incredible. That has moved on really quickly today in particular. Um, but we need to keep that momentum going. What's and the address for the site, for the e-petition? Um, if you go to gemmapeacock.org, um, Gemma with a J, there's a big button on there, big pink button. Just scroll down the page and it says sign the petition. Click on that and it will take you straight to the petition page where you can put your signature on there. It's been lovely talking to you, Gemma, and we, we wish you well. With Thank your you. Could I just say also, this isn't limited to one signature per household. If there's four of you in the household that all have your own email address, please sign it. Um, please keep this going. Please keep sharing okay. it via the social media. Thank you, Gemma.